So here, we're going to make a little video about feeding your garden. Because like all gardens, they all need feeding. Just like people. You don't feed them, they don't do very well. It's just like, if we got a massive plate of food, we ate that food, we'd look fantastic, wouldn't we? Well, some of us might look fantastic, some of us just might look the way we do, but never mind. Anyway, you'd be alright with eating that food. And then all of a sudden, as that food goes down, all the food's gone off that plate. You start getting a bit hungry. You start looking a bit worse for wear. No food coming. Well, there's only one way it's going to end. You're going to end up being plant food. Yes. So, it's the same with plants, basically. So, the cheap way of feeding your garden is here. So everyone knows leaves. Plenty of leaves, they fall all the time. You go to the park, collect them. You can make a leaf mould if you want. Or you can scatter it on the garden. I do a bit of, well, I don't make leaf mould, but I do put it in the compost heap. And I do put it on the beds. But you have to wet it down, because more than likely it will just blow away. Or get a big pile of it on the lawn. Go over with the lawnmower, mulch it up a bit. Leaf mould is brilliant. So, and that's free. Absolutely free. If you don't have trees, you can go to the park and collect a bit. Or, if you know people who gather it up to get rid of it out the garden, if you get them to bag it up, because they're going to fling it away, and you just ask for it, and they've already done the hard bit for you, Amazing. But also, I've got here, chicken poo. I've got two lots of chicken poo. This is quite dry. But this has got a lot of grass in. They're not my chickens, they're the neighbour's chickens. So, let's say, that is quite dry. But then, where they sit on a night and poo most of the time, you've got this stuff, which is absolutely minging very moist as you can see now if I put that on a plant it'll probably just burn the plant kill the plant it's too strong so that what I sometimes do is I get a bucket of water put that in the bucket of water leave it for a few weeks tip some of the water into a watering can Probably dilute it because it'll be still quite strong. And then I go around watering the plants. Now, when I use animal poo, I do it in winter. And you're probably thinking, why winter? The plants want it in summer. Because I basically don't want to be sat in the garden smelling poo all summer. So I get it in the ground in winter and hopefully it can, some of it stays there for a while until summer. And then it'll start eating it, taking it in. It's full, it's full of nitrogen. So it's good for the plants. It'll, <clears throat> it's like most poo. Good for leafy greens. So if you've got like canners and stuff like that, it'll make them big leaves. Lots of, lots of leaf, not much flower, lots of leaf, brilliant. That, because it's diluted with grass and stuff, that can probably go straight on. But, I might put some of that on the veg patch, but not on the garden. So the simple reason is, the dog will smell that and go and eat it. It'll just go around, take it all back off again. That's not what I want, a dog eating poo. But obviously you have to be careful as well because there's a lot of bird flu going around and you don't want that. You don't want to be spreading bird flu, do you? But then, obviously, if you've got chickens, what else will you have? Eggshells. 
Now, some people say bake them. Bake them and crunch them up. And if you bake them, it'll get rid of salmonella. But put it this way, if you need to bake your eggshells to get rid of salmonella, you really shouldn't be eating them anyway. But this is the UK, and we, where you don't really have salmonella in birds. Well, you shouldn't, because all eggs get tested. All birds, all chicken farms will get tested every so often to make sure there is no salmonella, because salmonella eggs will not be sold in a shop. And obviously, egg shells are 96% of calcium. That's a lot of calcium. So that is absolutely brilliant for tomatoes. So I'll be crunching all these up where I'm going to plant my tomatoes. So you can dry them in the oven if you wanted. You can leave them out in the sun. Or you can just smash them up and put them straight around. Now it's slow releasing, so... It's better to get them in before your tomatoes or wherever you're putting them. Get them in because it's slow releasing. Get it into the ground. Bish bash bosh. Also good for peppers. The extra calcium helps. It helps prevent blossom end rot on tomatoes, which I've only had a couple of times. Don't really suffer from it, so... That's always good. But we will be putting more down. It's also good for your broccoli and cauliflower and stuff. So, so you can sprinkle that around. All your plants or wherever you're going to grow them. I mean, you can sprinkle it all year round, all over winter. Get it in the ground, ready for summer. Now, some people say that if you sprinkle it around, plants it'll stop slugs from going to the plants well i find this not true i mean it might help prevent it a little bit they might go oh i might go a different way because that's i don't like that texture but they say the sharp edges will stop slugs from going to your plants no i've had slugs slime on cactuses before and if a cactus doesn't stop a slug well an eggshell is not going to stop a slug that's for sure so good luck with that and then we've also got bananas. Now banana peel. <clears throat> Some people will dry the, the banana skin out. They'll dry it out on a sunny windowsill until it goes hard and you can snap it. Or if you, you can put it in the oven on a low temperature to dry them. Or if you've got a dehydrator. And do that and then if you dry them you can actually put them in the blender and make like a fine dust that you can sprinkle i don't do that but another I, what i do do is the skin i'll chop it up small bits and i'll put it in the watering can and i'll leave it in the bottom of the watering can with water for about two weeks giving it a little stir and it'll put all the goodness into the, the water full of potassium and calcium which like I said in the eggshells will also prevent blossom end rot so tomatoes are good uh, bananas are good even I mean that's if you like bananas if you don't you're screwed aren't you but anyway yeah, so they're brilliant for peppers, tomatoes, most things anyway. Anyway, so in the watering can, and then I water my houseplants with it. Not all the time, just every now and then. And obviously, houseplants need feeding as well. So, or you just chop it up and fling it on your veg patch. But also, tea bags. Well, we all like a cup of tea. I don't have got any tea bags here. There's plenty in there. But as you can see, that isn't sorted very... That's my compost tea, but it isn't very sorted, you know. I'm going to separate all, mix it all up equally. It's just chucked in there at the moment. 
but tea bags help ab absorb and return ret retain moisture so they're all good personally we get the cheap tea bags which i have never found tea bags in my compost heap when it's rotted down a lot of people will say that they contain plastic and stuff that won't break down but i've never found any so fingers crossed there <clears throat> but then we have this lucky for me my girlfriend works in a coffee shop so i get lots of coffee and we've all heard about coffee haven't we look at that probably too much coffee I'll get one of them bucketfuls a week. But you'll be thinking that's too much coffee to put in the garden. But we have a bit of a mole problem here. So it's ideal. Because moles don't like the smell of coffee. So basically, so much goes in the garden. The rest of it just got, gets scattered on the lawn. <clears throat> and it'll soak in. Hopefully, keep the moles away. Fingers crossed anyway. And coffee's a green compost. Even though it's brown, it's a green compost. Adds loads of nitrogen again. A lot of things do, don't they? Helps with drainage. Aeration. Keeping the soil moist. It actually attracts earthworms. And we all know earthworms is good for the garden. They reckon it also keeps slugs away, cats away, rabbits away. But not quite sure about the slugs, but it's good anyway. Good for acid loving plants. Not so good for tomatoes. You put a tiny bit down, but don't go overboard around the tomatoes. It's good for root crops. So around your brassicas, your cabbage, your cauliflower. That's wrong, isn't it? It'll be good for your carrots. Basically, it's good for a lot of things. I'll just sprinkle it everywhere. Because, well, I've got a lot of it. I also chuck some in the compost heap. Because it feeds your plants slowly. So in the compost heap, straight into there, there. It'll help. It'll, it'll feed it a bit better and it's less work to do but then if you've all got a log burner wood ash <clears throat> not ash not ash the broken next door but wood ash it's brilliant for your garden as well now I get lots of wood ash during winter because we have a log burner but you might have a fire pit or something where you burn a bit of wood i'm not talking about canalized wood painted wood or stuff like that just nice clean good old wood logs are out like that it's also full of potassium it is brilliant for fruit and your carrots your parsnips your peas your beans and stuff like that so fruit trees love it <clears throat> but also just sprinkle it around the compost see there's quite a few things that do love it so that is as farmers call it potash as i call it wood ash so here we've got ash wood ash not coal ash coffee chicken poo Eggshells, banana, leaves. So, obviously there we've got the compost heap. And we all know what we can put in compost heap. Nothing cooked. All your veg peels and stuff from your Sunday lunch. Grass, all your green clippings, brown leaves, cardboard, any plant material. All of these can go in. 
So if you're lazy and you can't be bothered to sprinkle it around or you're in a rush one day, just chuck it straight in there. I do. I mean, that ain't the best example of a compost heap. Because you're meant to mix it evenly, stuff like that. You're meant to have so much grass, so much leaves, cardboard, mix it. Not just put a ton of grass in, then a ton of leaves, and then a ton of branches, which I have there. It, down the bottom it's a bit more mixed, but now it's winter, it just tends to be, we've got less variety, so I'm just chucking it all in. But in about a month or so, I'll be getting all that out of there and it'll be going into there all that will be coming out of there so you might think you've got a lot because it's heaped up like that but by the end of the the six months or seven months whatever it takes it'll end up like that when I mean, you can make compost a lot quicker and you get them hot boxes and stuff but this is just the lazy way this is how I just do it. I don't have time after work trying to cut the grass and all this, water the garden. But that there is like gold dust. So as you can see, if the sun's not shining on it too much, there's a lot of thicker stuff in here. But it's also a lot of treasure. I mean, you can see there, it's more soily. I mean, I'll just put it through a bit of a sieve. Get, I mean, I don't have to, but I'll get some of these sticks out. We'll get like, like this and all this stuff. We don't want this in it. But this, this stuff here is not bad. I mean, we don't have to have it. A like potting compost if we're just using it for a mulch just to go around the plants <clears throat> but all this all i'll do with these bigger bits because obviously a lot of people would chop them up before they even put them in the compost heap but as i'm lazy composter all i'm going to do is i'm going to chuck it back into that compost heap and give it a bit longer to break down And then it might have broke down by next year, so stuff like this. I mean, that probably won't even break down next year. <clears throat> but it might be just the fact that the compost heap's been a bit dry over summer. Some of this. I mean, look at that. I mean, you see eggshells in there. I mean, it's hard to even figure out what you've put in there. Now, that there, you probably think that's just a bit of plastic. Well, we use them. Um, I don't know if you can see one here. There, these are composting green bags, and these, I don't know if you can see, it will compost and break down. Now, because we have a compost bucket in the house for the tea bags and stuff and we put one of them in to keep the bucket clean but they're not the best if you've got quite far to go and you've got a full bag a compostable bag like that full of wet material well the chances are the bag will break before you get to the compost heap so we bring the bucket out tip it out take the bucket back in well I say that it's normally the other half saying where's the bucket and it's in the middle of the garden somewhere but yeah there's potato peelings, leaves, cardboard. You might be thinking, what the hell is that? That's just a tea bag box. I know it's it's a bit shiny on one side, but it'll break down eventually. So yeah, leaves. It's a lot. So <coughs> dead plants. So all sorts in here. Anyway. There is one other thing that you can do as a man. Sorry, women, you're getting left out on this one. But while you're out in the garden, doing a bit of gardening, 
is a good source that you you're building yourself that can help the compost heap yes men not you women but men it provides a good source of nitrogen and potassium yes you can wee in that compost heap it is good for the garden so women if you ever see a man and he looks like he's talking to the compost heap just give him five minutes well, there's a good chance he's not. He's helping your vegetables grow by weeing on them. Yes. If that hasn't put you off your dinner, well, enjoy. <coughs> so, I'm going to, in my, co in my description, I'm going to write a list of what different things, coffee, ash, poo, chicken poo, eggs, bananas, you know. I'm going to write a list of what plants they're good for. I mean, there'll be loads of plants that I miss out. But I can't name every plant in the world. There's too many. But I'd love it if you'd subscribe, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, make a comment. Did I get something wrong? Because when you're reading up, one will say one thing, so you're like, yay. And then someone else will say the opposite, and you're like, oh, a bit confusing. But obviously, different things work in different parts of the country, different parts of the world. So, just let us know. Write in the comments. Help us out. Let's help each other out. What have I done wrong? What was good advice? Have a cup of coffee. Fling it on the garden. Well, I better empty these buckets on the garden. Enjoy this nice sunny day. Because I don't think it's going to last. We're only in February. Only at the start. The 5th. Wish me luck, gardeners. Bye for now.